Shadow Binders is back in stock on shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. And now on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. It's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. Well, remember we mentioned the Star Wars Star Cruiser Hotel that was coming and how they had told everybody that in Galaxy's Edge there'd be all this immersion and all these cool things that never materialized and they were saving it all for the Star Cruiser Hotel. And we told you it was going to be pricey. We said it was going to be like, oh, like $3,000 a weekend. Turns out it costs a lot more than that. Yeah, double that. Mm -hmm. Double that. We're looking at a family of four for a trip in the, this is the base price. And that's three adults and one child. If you have kids over 10, that you're all adults. Yeah, so we're looking at $6,000 plus uh, to, to fly on Mickey's magical... Galactic Scar Star, Star Cruiser. Star Cruiser is more like it. Scar, Scar your wallet. Scar your wallet with uh, yeah. Um. Wow. Processing this, we're gonna we're gonna talk oh, about but it. But it gets better. Oh. At the end of the trip, there's a prom. I mean, I'm sorry, a gala. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm not joking. All right. Uh. <laughs> Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 227,000, I think, Yay! something like that. Thank you for the support. We do talk a lot about Disney having worked in and around the company in various capacities over the years. And uh, yeah, you know, if you haven't been paying attention, this is who Mickey wants. For all their talk of, uh, you know, diversity and inclusivity, Disney really wants wealthy clientele. They want the whales, and I'm saying that in quotes, and what the whales are, are the people that make over $400,000 a year. I think it used to be $250,000, but now I think their, their target is $400,000. And like this poll pointed out, people that make the money they want usually go to like real Europe. Yeah, not right. Not Epcot, who's, you know? Who's going to pay to go to fake Europe when you can go to real Europe? Mm -hmm. and it's probably cheaper. It's probably cheaper. Say? Yes, high five me. Yes, yes. It's, it's cheaper to go to actual Europe. And no, 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 not Disney destination Europe, you know, where you get your own oh, Disney Oh, that's ridiculously expensive. Uh, just actually going to Europe. You can, you can have a nicer uh, European vacation than you can uh, Disney vacation. But anyway, yeah, so this Galactic Star Cruiser. Wait, wait can I just point out something real quick before you go? At the bottom underneath in the five print. For voyage departure dates, most weeknights. Oh, what Those are, are the weeknight prices. Oh my God, what are the weekends? For like 8.20 to 9.17. Like th that, that's only like a two-week time frame, three-week time frame. That's the price starting from those prices on weeknights. Oh, and then it gets better. That's a base price. It depends on which cabin you want. Yeah, so these are the not very good rooms. This hotel, this LARPing hotel. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Galactic Star Cruiser, we've been talking about it. It is basically all the immersion that was promised in Galaxy's Edge mm -hmm. for the plebs is now going to become a very exclusive concierge, mm -hmm. uh, white glove concierge experience for the ultra wealthy uh, to go LARPing, kind of like Star Trek The Next Generation. The hollow deck. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what they're going for. Yeah, but it's going to be real. And it's going to be real expensive. With real underpaid actors. So, well, they have actors. So yeah, here's the pricing. Now, um, I want to point out that these are that's the starting price, and that's for the probably the standard cabin. Okay, and the standard cabin is four to five passengers. Okay, uh, and you get this other stuff. Then you can go to the galaxy class suite which gives you uh, an extra seating area and a double vanity bathroom, bar area, two windows with views out into space and a few extra surprises because you have the bigger room, you get extra. But just wait, there's more. That's for four passengers. If you go up to the Grand Captain Suite, uh, this is a two bedroom. You can sleep up to eight people. So you can get eight people in there for the price. Uh, it has a posh living space complete with integrated seating area. All the comforts of the standard cabin, plus a main suite with a double vanity bathroom, a second bathroom with a single vanity, a bar area, three windows with views in the space, and a few extra Star Wars surprises. Who is this for? We already know who's for, rich people. Yeah, but... And LARPers who pay whatever. I was going to say, you've got to have some, some pretty wealthy geeks, some pretty wealthy LARPers to pay this because the average family of four is not going to plunk down $6,000 plus 
to go into what is basically a, a, a walk-in closet with a bed with They're a screen, small. with a screen to look into quote unquote space. Who is this for? And Star Wars right now with kids, it's in the gutter. Yeah. Like kids don't care. Well, I'm going to tell you what it includes and, and what your itineraries could be. Now, oh. included in this is one day at Disney Hollywood Studios. Oh, boy. One day. I think it's probably around the schedule they have, too, because you have to ride their special buses to keep you in the immersion. So this includes, for that price, two nights stay in a cabin or suite. Ongoing immersive and interactive entertainment where choices determine your experience. Food and beverages. Excluding alcohol and specialty, you know, you have to pay for those separate. Um, so you get like you and they have a quick service meal docking bay seven if you go to Hollywood Studios. Admission to Hollywood Studios for your planetary excursion to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Again, for one day, even though you're there for two. Valet parking and exclusive Star Wars Star Cruiser data band so that you can they can keep track of you and, and make sure they know what you're doing. <laughs> And then they have a sample itinerary. Okay. Okay, which I want to point out. We joked. We joked. I shouldn't move this up higher. We joked that it was going to be, if you got went to this place, you were going to get to go ride, you know, the two attractions of Galaxy's The Day. two attractions. And you the do. You get special treatment. Um, like, here's an example of day one. Here's an example of day two. Um, you go to the transport shuttle to Batuu. You get to ride Rise of the Resistance between 8.45 and 9.30. Uh, then they have a story moment. They have these story moments. You could broker a deal for a heist or arrange to steal a, a ship from the First Order. And then they have the Falcon Smugglers run and then Docking Bay 7. And then you go back to your, tra you go back to your transport. So you're there from like 8 to like 1? So it's like and early morning paying, yes. magic hours or whatever. You're, you're paying a yeah. ticket to go there and you're, you're getting to go, but you're on their schedule to go. These story moments were supposed to be included in Galaxy's Edge for everybody. They were supposed to have mm -hmm. unexpected story moments like this. That was supposed to be part of the immersion mm -hmm. that was promised when they built this park. That it was supposed to rival Harry Potter. We do see stuff like that happen in Wizarding World. You know, on occasion you see stuff like this happen. But this is all, all the immersion that was promised. Uh, the, the restaurant with the aliens and the aliens walking around and the droids and all that. Now you got to pay $6,000 mm -hmm. to experience it. Other unexpected story moments... Prove your mettle to join an elite smuggling ring. Hide a stowaway to help the resistance. You might put the heist plan to action or bring the stolen ship aboard and watch out for the first order. Um, they had other ones that they, they gave as examples. Like, you know, they might be recruited by the, you know, the Republic or whatever it is called now. Or, in the, or you might be recruited. No, that would be, that would be worth paying for. If this was actually an original trilogy. Yeah, sorry, it's not that. Or if, the first order. It's they, Yeah, so clearly they're going to be doing it. The new Star Wars. Yeah, so that right there, you you've you've immediately cut your audience because the people that have the money for this sort of thing, they're probably going to be OG Star Wars fans. They want Darth Vader to show up on their ship. Mm -hmm. How yes. cool would that be, Darth right. freaking Vader? Not it's gonna Kylo, be Kylo Ren. Ren. Uh, okay, so then they also had part of their their big you know reveal is the costumes and gala. I was damn it, I can't it's, uh... prom. Throughout your adventure, you're encouraged to don your galactic best. As you will become a unique character in the Star Wars galaxy, we invite you to dress the part. You're, if your wardrobe is currently limited to single planet, Star Wars Galaxy Apparel is available <laughs> in advance. There it is. I know. It's available in advance from Shop Disney or on the ship. Oh, my God. This is Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique for Adults buying tuxes. Star Wars tuxes. This is Wait. such bullshit. Well, some of the cosplayers are going to have far better outfits than, than Disney's oh, going to sure. provide. But then I love this. Um, you know, how will you come dressed? In your Jedi best? Ready to rumble for rough and tumble smuggling? Well, people are probably going to get rough and tumble, but it's not for smuggling. That's for smuggling penises. Dress yep, to nap. <laughs> Dress to impress your, your Coruscant best or in your most comfortable garb from your home oh, planet. God. It's up to you. But I love this. But whatever plan, planet's clothes you choose to wear, be sure to save your very finest for the traditional end of the cruise gala celebration. Gala. Prom. Basically prom. Space prom. Oh, for fuck's sake. Just stop. Who the hell is this for? And the people that would be into space prom can't afford $6,000 to, to, for a fake hotel, a fake cruise. It's a fake cruise. You know what they're going to do next? 
Disney's gonna be like, you know, it's really expensive to actually put those boats on the water. Let's just have fake cruises. Mm -hmm. Just come to Disney World. We have a fake cruise ship with a fake porthole. It's just a, an iPad you can look at. Right, right. There's gonna be screens and you can see all the water and you don't have to worry about drowning. And then we're gonna go to fake uh, whatever the key is. They'll, you know, you'll go into a, a, a go key. into a room with sand on it, and then they'll have like sun lamps and wind, and then you know, and but th that's okay. You can go shop at all the shops. Yeah, that's what's gonna that be right there. It's gonna be just a bunch of a bunch of stores. God. So I when I saw the the gala thing, I about I just about fell on my seat. I was laughing so hard. I was like, Are you kidding me right now? This is going to be an unmitigated disaster. Okay, I think what's gonna happen. It's gonna do well at first. At first, but everybody who does it once, you're not gonna go back for repeat visits six thousand, seven thousand dollars a pop. No for two way. days. For two days. For and then, two days. Then, then they're gonna probably encourage you to go out and stay at the, one of the hotels and, and go to the other parks for like a week. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, of course they are, because they don't want you to leave property. But I'm like, and, and it's the freaking sequel trilogy. If you were gonna do this, Disney. People might have paid for original trilogy if Princess Leia was there and Han Solo was there and characters people actually gave a shit about were there. You're that or it'll all be Or you're Yoda. going to like, you're going to Hoth or something like that. You're not going to Batu. There you go. There you anybody go. can go to Batu and they've probably already been. Um, I love this too. They said, your choice is determined. This is exactly what they promised the immersion they were promised yes. for everybody. Yes. New and familiar Star Wars characters need your help and we'll invite you to delve deeper into the story, interact with them like never before, embark on secret missions or create secret alliances. That was one of the selling points they had at Galaxy. That was one of the selling points they made at um, when they had the convent, what was it? The Star Wars, what's it called? Uh, Celebration. Celebration. When they had celebration, they were talking about it. This is supposed to be part of it. They were promising this in the beginning. I remember being on tours with the tour guides, and they were all excited because they're like, "Oh my gosh, we tell you what we're hearing," and none of that was what we got. Yeah, the choices you made in Batu were supposed to be somehow tied to your magic band, or I had think. you crashed a Falcon, or something yeah, like that. and it would come up in like unexpected story moments throughout the park. You go to a bar, you go to a shop. You know, if you're wanted, they'd be like, "Hey, get that guy. Stormtroopers are yeah. after you, or something." They had technology that they were patenting for uh, laser bolts. Well, that, I was going to mention that. The lightsaber stuff. Yeah. You know the lightsabers you face off against a remote training device. That was supposed to be in the parks, too. You buy a lightsaber in the parks, you're not allowed to use it. You have to keep it in the in the case because they don't want you wielding lightsabers in the, in the park. Understandably, so, though. All the cool stuff. All the cool stuff that Disney promised is behind a $6,000 paywall. Well, it could be $4,000 something if you're only oh, two okay. of you. Okay, okay, okay. Um, you know, or so you much and a better. bunch of your friends. Uh, so they said, explore the bridge and operate the ship's systems and controls. Take an exclusive transport to Batu. It's a bus. It's, it's literally a bus. a bus. I have the, the, the blueprints are up on Pirates and Princesses. It's a bus. It's a bus. Um, where you have the opportunity to engage in unique missions and experiences that extend the story of your adventure. Your story may even lead you to discover the inner workings of the ship or the in the engineering room. Um, they're talking about food and stuff. One thing that was interesting, I don't know if it's on here. Um, no, but they are having like, like a regular cruise. It's all inclusive. So your meals are included, except for things like if you want specialty beverages or alcohol or something like that, you have to pay extra. You also could dine at the captain's table for an upcharge. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's a really steep one too. Is that just, is this supposed to be Star Wars food that looks like General So's chicken? It looks to me like, like the stuff you... It, Pandora. It, yes, it looks like Pandora. So that's what space um, food and, looks and like. Our, my kids and I don't really care for the Pandora food. It's so, bland. It's really bland. Yeah. So they're talking about the different places you can go and all that. So that's going on here. This, the Halcyon's the name of the ship. And all that stuff. So, that, so we finally got the information. It's more expensive than we thought. Yes. They're pushing dressing up and costumes, but you can buy from them for an upcharge. Um, it's just, it's just ridiculous. You're getting to go do all kinds of stuff. They promised that the general, you know, people going to Gal Galaxy's Edge, but two would be able to do, you're going to do and they're not. Um, you don't have to wait for a, a fast pass or a, not, not fast pass. I'm sorry. A, a boarding group for Rise of the Resistance. Which is a kind of a one and done. It's, it's, it, it's okay. If I've got, I'd probably get it if it was classic Star Wars. Yeah. If it were classic Star Wars. Yeah. I, I, I would agree. I just don't, it, it just, for, for the amount of hype and we've said before and people, God, people got so pissed off as for the amount of hype around the Rise of the Resistance. Uh, it really was kind of underwhelming. It's cool because you're actually on Death Star and stuff, and it is cool. I'm not going to say it's not. But half of the quote-unquote ride is just you going through queues that are interactive and, like, little shows leading yeah. up to the ride. So if it was, like, 20-minute ride, no, not really. It's a bunch of queues and interactiveness with, with, you know, like, 
animatronics or other guests around you or whatever. Plus it breaks down all the time. Almost, almost like, you know, the people that came to us who worked for Disney, who said, Hey, this thing is going to break down all the time. Almost like they were right. Mm -hmm. Almost like they were right. Right. We also write about this track being lit upside down wrong in Disneyland first. And they kept trying to say we weren't, but we found out later. Yes, we were. Yeah. Um, So that was going on. Well, let's just juxtapose this for a moment. Um, because, well, this, they announced this today. We're going to go back a little bit to the, uh, to the whole thing here. Disneyland is under fire because they're treating their cast members like shit, apparently. What? So why you have the $6,000 trip? Why they're telling Scarlett Johansson that her behavior asking for, if she has contracted that money, that they're not, they're not going to give it to her because, you know, how dare she do it in a pandemic? There's a video out there. Now, I can't, you know, speak to it. It's done by the unions and the cast members. So, mm. you know, take it for what it will. You know, they have obviously a certain way they want to present it. But I'm hearing from cast members that it is pretty bad. Um, so their, their callous disregard for the pandemic. So apparently, according to this video, um, I'm going to quote what was writ written in the video. Disney got half a billion dollars in taxpayer aid during the pandemic and agreed to rehire laid off workers at their previous salary and benefits. But after reopening in April, Disney tricked their own laid off staff by offering them similar roles with lower pay, fewer hours, and no benefits. Workers who signed the new deal also gave up their seniority. Disney is filling other roles with subcontractors instead of original staff. They cut one third of the custodial staff despite the need for increased cleaning during the pandemic, and the union is in the process of negotiating a new contract. But works, but work, I say workers say Disneyland's offer is unacceptable. Here's the thing: I guess what they did was they hired people back, and then they they they, they basically were listed as a new hire with a pay and everything, the same as new hires were. And they were saying in the video, I guess I can't confirm it. I'm just telling you what the video said that there are people that have been there for 30 years. And they are now listed as a new employee. Interesting. That's what the video said. And they're also in a lawsuit, a class action lawsuit, which was actually started before the pandemic. Yes. There's a class action lawsuit because they said that Disney is violating the Anaheim living wage law. Apparently, they aren't paying the required hourly wages. Um, I, I'm, it's really kind of hard to understand. It's something about them getting money from Anaheim for their parking garage and Disney California Adventure. And the way it sounds is like the way that they're, they're, they're juggling it. They're saying that they don't have to pay this because they're paying something else. for some, It's really confusing. But um, yeah, this is what they said. Workers claim the city of Anaheim gave Disney a, a city tax subsidy in connection with the over $200 million in public bond proceeds that were provided to Disney to help finance the construction of California Adventure and a parking garage to serve the new theme park, which were paid back using Disney's taxes, which would have otherwise gone to the people of Anaheim. So basically, they're taking their tax money and they're using that to pay back this this bond. And, and yeah. so they they're, should have been paying twice, if that makes sense, is what they're arguing. Um, but they're also not via, they're not also not following the living wage law they're supposed to, and they're somehow using this to get around it. I'm not really clear on that, but that's going on at the same time. Well, they've had all kinds of problems with the city of Anaheim because they were going to uh, build that new luxury hotel again. But sensing a theme here, they were going to build a, uh, a diamond four star diamond hotel in downtown Disney, and then they pulled the plug on that because mm -hmm. there was a dispute. They wanted it was supposed to be facing out toward. As I understand it, if I remember correctly, it was supposed to be facing out toward the street in downtown Anaheim. Right. And Disney wanted to keep everything on property, and so they moved it to the other side. They they did something where they didn't they didn't have the agreement of Anaheim. Yeah. And then they had to have they they lost. They had to shut it down. Yeah. Disney had to shut it down. Because Anaheim agreed to it. Again, as I understand it, they agreed to it because they wanted people to leave the hotel and go out into the streets and go mm -hmm. buy from other retailers and stores in Anaheim to help the economy in the town said Disney's like, now nah, we'll just dump them out into downtown Disney and they can buy from yeah, us. Yeah, it was something like that. But they had <laughs> shut down, they had preemptively shut down a bunch of things and then they had to turn it, reopen them again. Yeah, because, they did. They shut like half of downtown because, Disney Because you know? like it was an Earl Sandwich and some other places got shut yeah. down. And then they had to reopen Theater. them. Yeah, because they didn't do the hotel after all. But I think it's interesting because... You know, for all they're talking about, you know, callous behavior during the pandemic, callous disregard during a pandemic, like what Scarlett Johansson. These are the same people 
who uh, apparently are, are, are allegedly tricking their cast members into like losing their seniority during a pandemic. Um, they laid them off, and a lot of people, because they were to a place where they did not have a nest egg or they can't hold on any longer, are going to have to take what they're given, mm -hmm. and they know that. So they can, you know, manipulate the situation. This is the same people that gave performance bonuses into the millions for their executives moving forward, like their CFO. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of different sets of rules around yeah. Disney. And they have no problem, you know, pandering, catering to the wealthy and making rules for their elite. Um, I wonder, did they, did they give those people the privilege test? Oh, yeah. Did they? The privilege test where, yeah, the, the, uh, the grunts working at Disney had to check their privilege mm -hmm. as part of their right. training. Yes, you know, yeah. make sure. Uh, meanwhile, the executives could do whatever. And then they're throwing shade and uh, publicly, you know, slandering. Well, I guess that's what she's arguing is they're kind of slandering Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. That's her argument mm -hmm. um, by make, con kind of implying that she doesn't care about people during a pandemic. While they themselves are being accused of not caring about people during a pandemic. And then releasing a Star Wars hotel at thousands of dollars for two days. This is insane. This is absolutely like I, yeah, this is going to go over well at first. There's going to be a lot of buzz about, but this is not something that I, I don't think is going to get repeat patronage because it's a, it's it definitely is a one and done. I mean, it's cool. I'm not going to say it's, it's cool not. Concept, it's a really cool but... idea. Um, people are, there will be people who pay it 100%. I don't mm -hmm. know how long it's going to last, but there'll be a lot of people who pay it at first. Uh, if you're going on with a bunch of friends, it, you know, because I noticed the more people you have in your room, the cheaper it gets. If you're going with a bunch of your friends, it might, you know, break down that it won't be that much. Um, but, you, you know, if you're just you and your family, it could cost you a lot of money because you're paying for your, everyone in your group. If it's, you know, if you're not paying for the whole thing, then by all means. And a lot of LARPers will go with their friends, so they probably will go. And I would love to see their costumes because their costumes are going to be superior. Oh, I'm sure. To what's there, um, 100%. Oh, another thing I want to talk about real quick, but then we can wrap it up, is they do have Disneyland's annual pass replacement. They announced it yesterday. Uh, they got rid of the annual pass in Disneyland in January. Um, it's called Magic Key. Now, the Magic Key does seem to be, a, a, in some ways, a better deal. Okay. I was surprised. I yeah. thought for sure they were going to gouge people. That never happens. Oh, just wait. I'm sure there's a, there's a, but wait, there's more. So you're going to choose your key. Yeah, I know, right? There's the dream key, which is $1,400. And they let you pay monthly payments if you're a California resident. Oh, well, that's nice. Um, On this one, you get reservation-based admission because they're not getting rid of the park reservations for a while. They can control people more that way. You can have six reservations at a time, 20% 20, 20 off of certain merchandise, 15% of food, parkings included. Believe key, $949. Reservation-based admission to one or both parks most days of the year. Um, so there's blackout dates, six the reservations at a time, 10% merchandise, 10% food, 50% off parking. Enchant key, $650, um, reservation admission to one or both theme parks select days, blackout days again. Mm. Uh, four park reservations at a time, 10% off merch, 10 off of food, no parking, anything. Imagine key, $399. Uh, again, certain days old, you'll be allowed to go to the parks. Uh, this is for Southern California residents only. Two park reservations at a time, 10% of food, merchandise, and no parking. Uh, August 25th when it comes open. Could, could have been a lot worse. Yeah, I expected it to be a lot worse. It's actually not that bad when you compare it to what they had before. But, you know, it's early. We don't know what all the fine print is. I noticed that Max Pass used to be, uh, you know, offered with some of these or mm. as an add-on. They're not doing that. Hmm... Oh, it's, it's not going to be a better deal than the annual passes, it's for sure. No, not in the end, yeah. because there's no way. And the max pass, they used to be like you could add $125 have max pass over the whole amount of your um, your pass. But now they're not doing that, probably because then you have to pay max pass per day. Yeah. So there's that. And then as far as Disney World annual pass holders, that's coming back open sometime before the 50th, if you needed an annual pass because they haven't been able to buy them, it's been that unless you already had one that you canceled, you couldn't re buy, you couldn't buy a new annual pass. They're lifting that and they're going to bring the annual passes back. Um, but no one's saying what the prices are. Oh, they're going to be more. I can guarantee it's mm -hmm. going to be more. No, no word on the pricing, but you can get them again by the the 50th anniversary. All right, so there we go, guys. Uh, yeah, Disney ain't cheap. Uh, they it's want, getting more expensive. They want the whales. They want the whales. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. 
Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.